I have never mastered the snot rocket. The snot rocket. Have I have never figured out how to do it without you try getting it, it just all dribbles over. out of your It nostril. just gets all over my face or my clothes. And I'm like, oh, geez. Howdy, folks. Welcome on back to you, me, and the movies. And brr, it's cold outside. We're in the heart of winter. You know what that means? Snow. Yeah. We're going to watch Hateful Eight, a Quentin Tarantino western that takes place in the snow. Cool. I like westerns. Yeah, it's a unique setting for a western, though, in the snow. Usually you think hot desert. Nope. Cold winter. North to Alaska. There's lots of westerns. So. Yeah. But we've watched a lot of Tarantino's movies. I think, what was the most recent one? We just watched uh, From Dust Till Dawn, which was Tarantino wrote. Yeah. And I think uh, before that we watched like Kill Bill or something. Right? Yeah. Were you ready for more Tarantino? I guess so. I'm just not thrilled about how long it is, but uh, well, I guess I'll get over it. It's Tarantino. It won't feel that long. Let's hope so. Yeah. Were well, you ready to jump in and get our Hateful Eight on? Yeah. Let's do it. But first, like, comment, and subscribe. Come hang out with us for the Hateful Eight. It's a really long Western movie. Yeah. Check out our Patreon link down below for early access to our videos, one commentary, access to polls, helps pick what we watch next. Links down there. Check it out. We also have social media, so if you like Twitter or Instagram, you can follow us. Yeah. Or if you don't have social media, just ignore everything we just said. Yep. Let's watch The Hateful Eight. Here we go. The first hour is just this. Love it. <laughs> Building anticipation. This all looks very familiar. We don't really have birch trees. Those are birch, right? Yeah. It's a very cartoony. That's yeah, Tarantino ish. I think this movie's long. There's actually an extended version. Netflix released it as like a four-hour episode miniseries. Mm. There's Jesus. It's a hell of a carving. I think that's a pretty heavenly carving, actually. Oh, good call. It's got a big cast. I mean, at least eight people. Big names. I mean. Oh. See why it's two and two almost three hours long. First twenty minutes are just zooming out on Jesus Christ. Enio Morcone with the score. Courtney Hoffman with the costume design. Well, Enio Morcone did the Good, Bad, the Ugly, and Fistful of Dollars trilogy. Did she? What? What? Cool. Sweet. Chapter one. Last stage to Red Rock. Oh, oh boy. May I come aboard? Well, Smoke. Is it up to me? Yes. Who's it up to? The fella in the wagon. Who's in the stagecoach? Before you approach. You take them two guns of yours and you lay them on that rock over yonder. Kurt Russell. Real trusting fella, huh? <laughs> Trying to get a couple of bounties in the Red Rock. So are you still in business? You know I am. You don't know nothing about this filly here. Nope. nope. Well, I guess that makes this one for two of this wagon. I sure as hell hope so. <laughs> Major Mark was warning this here's Daisy Domergoo. Domergoo. To you, this is Major Warren. Howdy, <laughs> But I ain't got no designs on her. One of my fellows over there is worth 4,000, another one's worth three, and one of them's worth one. It's damn sure good enough for me. <laughs> well, let me see their paperwork. Couple of bounty hunters running into each other. Hmm. 
I have never mastered the snot rocket. The snot rocket. Yeah. Have I have never figured out how to do it without you try getting it, it just all dribbles over. out of your It just gets trail. all over my face or my clothes. And I'm like, oh, geez. Right, you ain't really gonna let that n- ride in here, is you? I mean, maybe up there with OB, but oh! I'm gonna put you on top. You open up your trashy mouth again, I'll knock out them front teeth for you. You got it? She's mad. Give OB $50 when we get to Red Rock. He'll help you. Uh, I agree with OB. We could go in a lot quicker. You helped out too. God damn it. The hell, I'm already regretting this. Now, I can't likely help you tie fellas to the roof with my wrist cuffed to hers. And my wrist is going to stay cuffed to hers until I personally put her in a Red Rock jail. Now, do you got that? Yeah, I got it. Good. I think just OB helped. Slow motion horse running. Well, Tarantino's using 70 millimeter film, so he's really going all out. Most films are shot on 35. Let's see, you ain't got mixed emotions about bringing a woman to a rope. By woman, you mean her? So you're taking her in the Red Rock to hide? <laughs> you bet. You gonna wait around to watch it? Oh, you know I am. I want to hear her neck snap in my own two ears. I bound it's never hang, because I never bring him in alive. No. I'll give you, he got guts. But in the brains department, you're like a man who took a high dive in a low well. <laughs> <laughs> It's a broken nose. When I elbow you real hard in the face, that means shut up. <laughs> she must have done some bad things. Come on now, boy. <laughs> no, I don't like that wink. She's bad news. Who do you think plows back then? I don't know. Yeah. Or they just trample it enough that it's... Oh, those roads look pretty clear. Yeah. Old Mary Todd's calling, so I guess it must be time for bed. And that gets me. Yeah, it gets me too. <clears throat> you know what this is, Tramp? Hmm? It's a letter from Lincoln. Letters. Oops. Oops. His letter. Well, she ain't helping none, but it's all right. Is that the way niggas treat their ladies? You ain't no goddamn place. She ain't no lady. Neither are you. You're a duck. Oh, jeez. Okay, well, I'm not her. <laughs> I'm just commenting on your shirt you're wearing tonight. Considering there's a blizzard going on, a whole lot of fellas walking around, wouldn't you say, Major? Well, seeing as how I'm half of them fellas, uh, yeah. <laughs> Put them on. Oh, I ain't, I ain't wearing no handcuffs. You put those on and you can stop worrying about this whole thing right now. Chapter two. Son of a gun. A little jump, ain't you? Never mind the jokes, just do it. I think he's working with Warren. Maybe. You got business in Red Rock? Yes, I do. What? I'm the new sheriff. <laughs> Who's that? Daisy Domergoo. Who the fuck is Daisy Domergoo? Not a <laughs> My lord, is that really the real head of Major Marquess looking at me now? Yeah, it's really me and it's really my head. <laughs> <laughs> the man in Red Rock's supposed to pay you is me, the new sheriff. So if y'all want to get paid, y'all need to get me to Red Rock. Well, excuse me for finding it hard to believe a town electing you to do anything except drop dead. What do you think? You think he's supposed to be sheriff? <laughs> fucking know. Put them on and come inside. 
Well, he's got a lot of handcuffs. Ain't nobody on my head, Bushwhacker. You let me die, that's murder. He almost always plays a bad guy, though. Really? Yeah. One thing I know for sure. He trusts you more than... Son of a gun, he partnered up with you. Now. <laughs> <laughs> well, ain't love grand. Y'all on the ground make snow angels together? <laughs> Good snow for snow angels, too. Yep. Our little one loves making snow angels. Yes, she does. Y'all save me. You want to show me how grateful you are? Shut up. <laughs> Last piece. Some jerky? Yeah. You ain't never heard of Wellenbeck Prison of War Camp, West Virginia. No, Rab, I ain't never heard of it. You bust out? Major Marquess did more than bust out. Well, the whole damn place was just made out of kindling. So I burnt it down. <laughs> <laughs> How many burnt prisoners they end up finding? What in the final Yankee death count? Something like 37? Oops. The fact that Erskine Mannix's little boy would talk about anybody else's behavior during wartime makes me want a horse laugh. Don't you see? <laughs> Cause when <laughs> are scared, that's when white folks are safe. Don't talk that hateful you can ride up top with OB. No, 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 no. You done got me talking politics. I didn't want to. <laughs> He's the one that brought up how famous he was. <laughs> Chapter three. Minnie's haberdashery. Do you know what haberdashery is? No. Do you? It's kind of like shenanigans. Ah. Hey, Farva. What's the name of that restaurant you like with all the goofy shit on the walls and the mozzarella sticks? You mean shenanigans? No! Oh. Where's Minnie and Sweet Dave? He says they ain't here. He's looking after the place while they're gone. Who are you? I'm Bob! I'm Bob. <laughs> you are. Help OB with the horses. Ah. You need a dumb fence! You need to help! I got two of my best men on it! <laughs> Hold it shut! There's a hammer and nails by the door! You have to nail it shut! <laughs> Looks cold in there, too. You need, you need two pieces of wood! Why don't we fashion a latch pretty fast, huh? A woman? Out in this white hell? You must be frozen solid, poor thing. She's not a woman. <laughs> Devil. Jesus Christ, that's awful! Uh, I, I think we all felt the same way, but we're a little too polite to say something. <laughs> we don't have that problem. Where's the Where's it on the floor? Yeah. Mm, sheriff of Red Rock, that'll be the day. He's a goddamn sheriff. I'm a monkey's uncle. Yeah. <laughs> Oswaldo Mowbray. Oswaldo. It's called Waldo for short. <laughs> I'm Oswaldo Mowbray, the hangman in these parts. Hmm. We got the sheriff, the hangman, and the hangman. And the bounty man. Yeah. He's a fancy hangman. He's got cards. What are the chances? That all these important people are meeting at this yeah. inn? So me and Chris better lay out a line. From the stable to the front door, and from the front door to the shit house. It's a good idea. We used to lay lines from the old house to the barn during the winter. Yeah. Just in case they... Last thing I want to do is take a dump in that thing in the middle of this blizzard. <laughs> <laughs> I just take the pile with me. Oh, they don't have enough stakes. That music was ominous. The good part about frontier justice is it's very thirst quenching. <laughs> The bad part is, 
It's apt to be wrong. As right. Well, not in your case. In your case, you'd have it coming, but... <laughs> For justice delivered without dispassion is always in danger of not being justice. Amen. That's why he brings him to hang. Christmas with Mother, I mean. It's a wonderful thing. Now, is that uh, good enough for you, John Root? It's good enough for you? No. That whole conversation was really weird for me. Okay. You're gonna you're gonna need two boards. One's not enough. You need two pieces of wood. You gotta hammer another one. What ain't good enough? It's gonna blow right open. But God damn it! Gotta open it, you dumb Shut up! <laughs> Oh, Jesus Christ. That door's a whore. <laughs> I'm Chris Lennox. The new sheriff in Red Rock? Really? Or oh, shit. I pay no attention to him. Oh shit! <laughs> you coming into Red Rock to hang Lance Lawson? Precisely. Do you have the execution on his own? In my bag. May I see him? Of course. <laughs> He's like, oh shit, what does he know about that? Who the trap with the Lincoln letter? The Lincoln what? Uh, I'm sorry, I heard that somebody in your party had a letter from Abraham Lincoln. I assumed it was you. Not who do you, him. Oh, I was like, who do you hear that from? Did you say your name was again? Bob. Warren. Bob. Many a sweet day went to visit her mother on the north side of the mountain. Her mother? Yes. And she left you in charge. See? Nah, this guy killed Minnie and her husband. Think so? Are you calling me a liar? Well, not yet, eh? You don't trust Bob? Not at all. You calling him a liar? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> They're quick draw, then. Does not seem warm enough in there to not be wearing a jacket. Captain Chris Mannix, Mannix Marauders. Erskine's boy? Yes, sir. Mm. So nobody in that room's gonna like Samuel L. Jackson's character? Well, Kurt Russell and him have a. They shook hands on that. Yeah, deal. They're, they're fine. Oh, you got a boy that lives in Red Rock? My son. He died out here a few years back. He came out here to the hills of Wyoming to make his fortune. Mm. Who oh, the idiot broke the damn door? He is. <laughs> Chili bean. Do you know that, sir? I don't know that, but I know he's a. And that's all I need to know. They're gonna end in a fight, you think? I would say. General Sanford Smithers, Battle of Baton Rouge, informed this old cracker that I was in Baton Rouge also, on the other side. <laughs> Gentlemen, since we may be trapped here for a few days, may I suggest a possible solution? We divide... I know going to somebody stay on one side, somebody stay on the other. We could say that the fireplace side of the room, a symbolic representative of Georgia. While the bar represents Philadelphia. Where's the Mason Dixon line, though? <laughs> Couldn't tell you. One of them fellas is not what he says he is. What is he? In cahoots with this one, that's what he is. One of them, maybe even two of them, is here to see Domergu goes free. Um. 
Are you sure you ain't just being paranoid? <laughs> He's absolutely right. <laughs> Me and one of them fellows is in cahoots. We're just waiting for everybody to go to sleep. That's what we're gonna kill y'all. <laughs> Do you think they are? This here is Daisy Domergoo. I'm taking this woman into Red Rock to hang. Because <laughs> I'm gonna take your gun, son. You are? Yes, I am. You want it? You're gonna have to come <clears throat> take Calm down. Ooh. Pretty sneaky. Is he gonna take that personal? Make him bleed? He's moving to the south side of the house. <laughs> OB. Go to the outhouse. Take this bucket and dump it down a shithole. Oh, jeez. <sighs> Dang. Well, that's a shitty thing to do. Yeah, because now they can't have their guns even when they're done. Yeah. Mm, that's good looking stew. It does look good. I got a pork roast out for dinner tomorrow night. Mm. You make a stew out of it? Could. Pork stew. I'm going to cut you loose while we eat. Seems like a bad idea. Neutral. Switzerland. <laughs> Potato soup sounds good too. Mm -hmm. Nobody just held the door for him. A little cold out, I guess, huh? Let's take the bear skin. It's a fucking wind. It's a buffalo. It's like buffalo. <laughs> you want some stew, Opie? Stew. Later. <laughs> so, you got a letter from Abraham Lincoln? Yeah. The Abraham oh, Lincoln? No, the fake one. May I see it? No, you may not. <laughs> John Ruth, I ain't to be the one to break it to you. But ain't nobody in Minnie's haberdashery ever corresponded with Abraham Lincoln. Least of all, that there. Was all that horseshit? Why would he go out of his way to because save that letter from the snow if it was... <laughs> He's just telling them it's horseshit. So they stop talking about it. Talk bad. She likes it. <laughs> but you got no idea what it's like being a black man facing down America. The only time black folks are safe is when white folks is disarmed. Oh, he is lying. Huh? Okay. Let's see how this goes. Trying to start shit. It was cold the day I killed your boy. And on that cold day, with your boy at the business end of my gun barrel, I made him strip right down to his bag. 
Yeah, no, Welcome on back to me and the pee pee. It's gonna be cold. No kidding. <clears throat> That's just rude. He's got snowshoes. He's got, yeah, I was gonna say, at least they gave him the snowshoes. <laughs> Good on that actor. Full penis. You'd be surprised what a man that cold would do for a blanket. I pulled my big black pecker out of my pants. And Chester Charles Smithers sucked on that warm black dingus for long as he could. Think this really happened? No. You gonna spend the next two, three days ignoring the that killed your boy? Ignoring how I made him suffer. Ignoring how I made him lick all over my Johnson. <laughs> well. One less mouth to feed. Mm-hmm. So he was just—he uh, was just trying to get him to grab the gun. Yep. Yeah. Chapter four. Dahmer Hughes got a secret. Joe Gage volunteered to take Smithers' dead body outside. Straws were drawn to see who'd help him. Obi lost. <laughs> oh, poor Obi. Captain Chris Mannix donned the dead general's coat and joined Oswaldo in lighting the candles and lanterns. Rude. Bob enjoyed a manzana roja. Red apple cigarettes. Those are in all the Tarantino movies. Mm -hmm. Somebody poisoned the coffee. And the only one to see him do it. Was Domergo. Who poisoned the coffee? Don't know. Probably the hangman. Go ahead. Sing it. Is it either the hangman or the... Bob? Yeah, Bob. And you'll be dead behind me, John, when I get to Mexico. Bob. Music time's over. What? How long, how long until that poison kicks in? I'd be worried about getting poison blood know, in my mouth. I know. Oh my god! Ah! Ah! Give me that fucking gun. Don't test me, bitch. Get your backsides up. Get that back wall over here. Who poisoned the coffee? Oh, it wasn't the sheriff. So. You finally decided I'm telling the truth about being the sheriff of Red Rock, huh? I don't know about all that. But I know you ain't the killer poison that coffee because you almost drunk it your own damn self. <laughs> Give me the key. You ought to just shoot her now. Cause he doesn't care about justice. Mm -hmm. He just cares about the bounty. You're going to die on this mountain and I'm going to fucking laugh when you do. What I say about talking? <laughs> Meant it, didn't I? <laughs> you just killed the only man here committed to getting you to Red Rock alive. No kidding. Well, except for maybe one of them, too. Now what charms this bitch got make a man brave a blizzard kill in cold blood? <laughs> I'm sure I don't know. <laughs> But it's the stew. It's got me thinking. 
Now, how long have you said many been gone? A week? Yeah. That was many stew. But that damn show is Minnie's stew. <laughs> What's in the chair? Blood. Sweet Dave's goddamn blood. Oh. Oh, he's going to make a great sheriff. Were you actually accusing me of murder? Yes, you definitely killed those people. Mm -hmm. If you'd have been here two and a half years ago, you'd know about that sign used to hang up over the bar. No dogs or Mexicans allowed. <laughs> <laughs> you know why she took it down? She started letting in dogs. Then you killed many. And two days. Oh my god. Just blew his whole fucking head off. <laughs> and we watched it. Can I kill him? Say adios to your huevos. Yowza. Chapter 5. The Four Passengers. Who's in the basement? The I'm guy sorry. that was working with Bob. Earlier that morning. This little farmhouse up there on the hill. I noticed mm -hmm. it earlier. I noticed that too. Recognize any of those boots? No. <laughs> General's been there for a while, huh? Yeah, know. funny that nobody said anything about. Uh, he didn't say anything about all the people that they killed. Yeah. You speak French. Oui. Oui, well, what does that mean? It means yes. Oui. Hi, hi, Dave. Ask me if my ass is fat. What? Ask me if my ass is fat. It is. <laughs> look like good peppermint sticks. They do. They look more like spearmint sticks. But... Yeah. So why do they call you Six Horse Judy anyway? She's got six horses out there. Because I'm the only Judy you've ever seen that can drive a six horse team. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of a stupid question. <laughs> yeah, really. You three collect the bodies and chuck them in that well out there? A lot of blood to clean up. Yeah. Oi. Later today. Dirty. Son of a gun. He's gonna come in here. And he's gonna have my sister with him. My sister. During the next four hours, Jody and the boys chuck the bodies down the well. We have to dig a new well. I'm not kidding. We are still going to be facing John Ruth, chained to my sister with a pistol pointed at her belly. He's wearing contacts. I don't know why they got to do that. Like they can, he can still be her brother, and they could have different colored eyes. Like she can have brown eyes, and he can have blue eyes, and they can still be brother and sister. Whatever. You have different colored eyes than your brother. Do you? Yeah, his are more like a hazel green, hazel green color. 
why don't they just kill him there and then kill the other ones while they're doing the horses? Yeah. Pretty easy, huh? Yeah. Last chapter. Black man, white hell. How you doing, old boy? Oh, they shot my nuts off. How you doing? Well, my leg hurts really bad. But I think if I put all my weight on my right foot... I was just being sarcastic. I don't give a fuck about your leg. <laughs> Coming up! Hold on there, you bushwhacking sack shooter. <laughs> you just opened the door. We tell you when to come up. Now throw out your pistol. Betty got another. Now throw out your other pistol. I ain't got another pistol. Well, you better shit another pistol out your ass. <laughs> How are you doing, dummy? Better. Now I see your ugly face. So I've done it for him. Shh. Oh, she's got, she got his brains all over her face. And why not just kill her? <laughs> Be done with this. I'm working with all three of them fellows. But not because they got butterflies in their belly about me, but because we're all gang members. That fella y'all just killed in the basement was Jody Domingue, my brother. Well, who the hell... <laughs> And Chris, I'm telling you, you ain't done anything yet that we can't forgive. So, that's my deal. No deal, bitch. You gonna let that n speak for you, Chris? Just shoot her. Bob's real name is Marco the Mexican. He's worth $12,000. Man, that done blowed his face off. Marco ain't worth a peso. <laughs> <laughs> Under the name of English Pete Hickox, I got a federal bounty of fifteen thousand dollars on my head. It's all yours, Chris. Why not just kill them all and take the bounty for all of them? Yeah. And when those fifteen killers come across you, <laughs> and kill every son of a you wanna save the town? Then shoot that m dead! Ah, Jesus Christ! Oh, ah! ho, ho, you believe in Jesus now, huh, bitch? Well, good, cause you about to meet it. Oh, she's not going to heaven. You think there's really 15 guys in Red Rock waiting? No. It's out of bullets. Jeez. Mm, I get Oswaldo and Joe Gage. Yeah. Seven thousand dollars in the barn too. I don't feel so good. Oh no. <laughs> I ain't dead yet, you black bastard. <laughs> now we've come to the part of the story where I blow your goddamn head off. No, 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 don't shoot her. In the head. Don't shoot her in the head. When the hangman catches you, you hang. They gonna be able to get her to Red Rock? Oh. Nope. They're just gonna hang her here. Frontier justice. <laughs> now that was a nice dance. That sure was pretty. Oh. 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 
Think anybody's gonna make it out of this alive? No. Oh, Mary Todd's calling. So I guess it must be time for bed. Oh, Mary Todd. That's a nice touch. <laughs> Listen, all you people, try and understand. You may be a... Well, then. All right. Well, I liked it. Little, uh, no one gets out alive, held up in an inn in a blizzard yeah. movie. Yeah, what'd you think? It was fine. It was fine. You're it not? was it was good. I mean, it was yeah. good. It was a good movie. And just what? There's just what? like so much, so much use of the of one particular word that yeah. it just like really yeah I have to use it that much like every other fucking word. Yeah. Well, I don't even feel like back in that time they would have said it that frequently. Okay. I don't know. It just annoyed me. And I, I mean, I, the word was used a lot back then. I get that, but. I don't know. It felt felt kind of like a an excuse of a movie just to use that word over and over and over and over and over yeah. again. Well, I mean, Samuel Jackson was the star of the film, so I'm sure if anybody had a problem with it, it would have been him. But I'm not saying like had like a problem with it. I I just feel like it was a little unnecessary to continue to say it over and over and over <laughs> and over and over again. Like there was not a single line in that movie that did not include the word. Okay. And, you know, we don't have to keep this in the commentary. It doesn't matter. I just... It's fine. When it comes to Quentin Tarantino movies, this is, a, I think, one of the, the unique ones that's different than the other ones because it doesn't feel fantastical. It feels like this really could have happened. Like, when you watch Kill Bill or, like, Pulp Fiction, they're all kind of, like, over the top. Yeah. Bit yeah, you're right. I mean, this doesn't... This felt, like... Kind of believable, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, felt like, kind of I mean, believable. Even if generally. you compare it to a film that takes place in a similar time, like uh, Jingle and Chained, mm-hmm. that one is still more of a like a fantasy film than this because it's like I thought that movie was better. Yeah, I do too. But yeah. I don't know what made Quentin Tarantino want to make this movie because the other ones feel like more. There's more adventure to it. This was kind of just a one location. Feels kinda. like there's more depth and purpose to the other ones too this yeah. one kind of seemed purposeless to me yeah because everybody dies at the end so there's not really a... oh, and like the storyline was just kind of like okay i don't know. i don't know it's good it had great actors in it perhaps the three hour longness of it was just enough to take what i what i think could have been a really great movie and just make it unnecessary okay who was your favorite character? Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, not Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell was good, but Samuel L. Jackson at least like aware of what was going on. Yeah, he was, he was deducing something was. Yeah, up. exactly. He was more. Kurt Russell kind of fell into the. I mean, he did fall into the trap by yeah. drinking the coffee and all that stuff. Well, so. he he figured something was going on, but so he, he knew, but he just got too lazy. Yeah, but yeah, I think you're right. Why didn't they shoot John right when they walked in the door? I don't know. They could have just shot John right away and then. Killed the others as they were putting the horses away. Yeah. Problem solved. Well, probably, Movie yeah. over. They're probably worried about who the other people were and wanted to make sure it went cleanly. But it ended they, up not going cleanly for anybody. They, wouldn't, they weren't looking for it to go cleanly. They just wanted to get her back, so I don't know why they would have yeah. wasted their efforts. Their gang, they probably could have just killed everybody and been all right with that. Yeah. I mean, obviously that would have made this movie only about 20 minutes long. <laughs> but... Who had the best hat? I think Samuel L. Jackson. I liked his his flat brim. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. He pulled it off nicely. Yeah. And uh, Walter Goggins played uh, Chris. Mm-hmm. He ended up being an honorable man. And he did. Yeah, I didn't know, expect that their from differences at the beginning. I did not expect that from his. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't usually play those kind of characters. Nah. So. He's usually a little troublemaker. Huh? Yeah. Well, what should people comment on after the hateful eight? Favorite character and why? Yeah, who's your favorite character in The Hateful Eight? Matt? Mm-hmm. And uh, how, where do you rank this in Quentin Tarantino films that you've seen? Yeah. Would this be at the bottom of all the ones we've watched so far for you, I guess? Pulp Fiction, Kill Bill. Yeah, I think so. Jingo Unchained. You've seen Jingo Unchained mm-hmm. before we started the channel, so. 
we got some more to watch, like Jackie Brown and Reservoir Dogs. And... I just think this one lacked a little bit of depth. Depth? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was kind of just one setting, right? It was... Yeah, and and I'm okay usually with, like, bottled... I mean, we just watched Bullet Train. That was yeah, a long train, so. exactly. So I, I don't think it was the fact... It wasn't the fact that it was just in a in one room because i think that that's fine yeah it just i think lacked some depth and all right whatever all right anything else like comment subscribe thanks for hanging out yeah check out our patreon link down below if you want early access to reviews full commentary access to video access to polls helps pick what we watch next links down below check it out until next time have a good one bye